Hello and welcome to the first edition for 2014 of LGU Monthly. This is the show that brings you all the action and news from the women's amateur game in Great Britain and Ireland. It's the place where you can see not only the stars of the future from the home countries, but also from around the world. Here's what's coming up this month. We head to the St. Louis Country Club, the 38th Curtis Cup, which proved to be a frustrating affair for Tegwin Matthews' team. And we look back at the first of the season's major events, the Ladies' British Open Amateur Championship. But first we head to Missouri for the biennial match between Great Britain and Ireland and the USA. Since its inaugural event at Wentworth in 1932, players such as Laura Davis, Julie Inkster, Katrina Matthew and Michelle Wee have cut their teeth at this event. Great Britain and Ireland headed to the St. Louis Country Club as defending champions. After a stunning comeback at Nairn in 2012, many players went on to successfully join the professional ranks. For GB and I, only two players remained from that victorious team to try and defend the trophy and win for the first time on American soil since 1986. As two American greats Meg Mallon and Beth Daniel watched from the sidelines, Tegwa Matthews' team were up against it from the first strike. Morning foursomes at Nairn 2012, Reed Morning Fourball St. Louis 2014. The USA came out firing, taking all three points in the morning. Again in the afternoon, the GBNI team rallied, putting themselves in strong positions with some scintillating golf. Bronte Law is one of those players you want on your team, fiery, determined. Losing is never an option. Sterling University has produced some of the finest women golfers over the years. Indeed, Katrina Matthew competed in the Curtis Cup while studying there. Ailey Briggs was keeping that tradition going as the Greens of St. Louis held no fear for the 21-year-old who had won the Welsh Ladies Open Stroke Play Championship to qualify for the team. Stephanie Meadows sank the winning putt in 2012 to give Great Britain and Ireland its first victory in 16 years. The Northern Irish girl based in the States had broken every school record at Alabama University with nine victories. Her knowledge of US style courses was evident to see. But despite the home country's attack in the foursomes in the afternoon, it would be the Americans that would end day one without dropping a match. The simple fact was that they hold the putts from inside 20 feet. Europe took the halves from the afternoon, but would head into day two with a 5-1 deficit. Rain delayed the start of day two as the British weather set in. The GBNI team clocked up their first full point, courtesy of Annabelle Dimmock and Bronte Law, but lost the other two matches. Again, Matthew's team had it all to do in the afternoon foursomes, now trailing seven points to two, and with only ten and a half points needed by the home team, the pressure was on. Tea to green, Great Britain and Ireland couldn't be faulted. It would be the Greens and some bad luck that would leave them frustrated. Charlotte Thomas's expression said it all. The Americans again dominated on the Greens. Only Stephanie Meadow and Georgia Hall spoiled the US car with a half point as the USA headed into the day three singles, knowing that one point would see them regain the trophy. And that point came very quickly as Emma Talley secured the ten and a half points needed to see the American team, led by Ellen Port, regain the Curtis Cup. All matches were played to a conclusion though, and as in Nairn in 2012, GB and I were going to win their only session of the week. Ailey Briggs' love affair with the Greens continued as she secured a half point on her Curtis Cup debut. Georgia Hall would have one of those shots you'll remember for the rest of your life, an Eagle 3 on the long par 5 15th, as she secured the first point in the singles for Great Britain and Ireland. And how about this from Scotland's Gemma Dryborough, all square playing the 18th, a 36-foot monster putt, much to her delight, to take the second point. The debutantes had acquitted themselves well, all coming away with something from the week. Charlotte Thomas put the heartache of day two behind her to take a singles point. 
and it was fitting that Stephanie Meadow would secure the final point in the singles on her last appearance as an amateur. One day later, she would join the pro ranks. Two weeks later, she would finish third at the US Open Championship at Pinehurst behind two other former Curtis Cup players, Stacey Lewis and the winner, Michelle Wee. So victory for the United States 13 to seven, but a real battle for Great Britain and Ireland on the final day. The Curtis Cup moves back to this side of the Atlantic in 2016 to the Dunleary Club in Ballyman Glen, Ireland. Congratulations to Team USA winners of the 38th Curtis Cup. The trophy is back in American hands for now. Established in 1887, Royal St George's was built primarily as an English rival to St Andrews. It has a long tradition of championship golf and is renowned as one of the toughest courses in the world. When Darren Clark won his Open title in 2011, he became one of only four men to break par in a 72-hole tournament there. Well, St George's, since its inception in the 1880s, has always wanted to be a home for major championships. Indeed, it's written in as the primary purpose in our club rules. So about three or four years ago, um, we heard the LGU were looking for a home for this major championship, um, it is the British Amateur Open, and so we were delighted to put our name in the frame to add to the list of many other, other Open or other major amateur championships. The LGU has a long-standing tradition with the club dating back to the Victoria's Curtis Cup team of 1988. The setup here has been absolutely amazing. Uh, when uh, Royal St George's approached us a few years ago about hosting a competition, we immediately thought of the amateur championship. Uh, the quality of the courses is uh, absolutely incredible, and it just seemed the right thing to do to bring uh, the best lady golfers in the world to, to one of the best links courses. It's not just the course that has the history, so does this event. It has an illustrious role of honour, with past winners such as Katrina Matthew, Rebecca Hudson, and international winners like Anna Norquist and Athara Munoz. It's truly an international title that all players want on their CVs. I love this tournament. I love coming out here. Um, I mean, it's a completely different game, so uh, it's so much fun to experience uh, playing on the links. And uh, I've been playing golf in Oklahoma for the past four years, so it's, I mean, it's pretty similar to this. It's very windy, it's very firm, uh, so I think the, everything about this course just really suit my game really well. It's really nice, but it's really tough. There are hard greens and hard fairways. This is one of the biggest events in the world, not just in Europe. and. I'd like to finish as well as possible and this is my first time here and I've enjoyed it till now so hopefully I can get a good finish. The format of the event is simple. Two rounds of stroke play with the top 64 progressing into the match play section. To win you'll have to play eight rounds in five days. There was some early disappointment for the home support as defending champion Georgia Hall missed the cut. A new name will be on the trophy for 2014. She would be joined by her Curtis Cup teammate Ailey Briggs as the links began to bite. Only 10 players will be par or better after two rounds. One of those will be world ranked number five Australian Su Hyun Oh at level par. Two English players made the top 10. Inti Mehmet from Wentworth at one under showed great form over the first two days. As did Bronte Law at three under par, the highest of the home country players. Spain is always strongly represented and last year's beaten finalist Luna Sabron was loving the links at five under. A Belgian has never won this event. As the Clute showed no fear, she joins Sabron at minus five. It's playing quite nice for me. Uh, the wind is okay, not too bad. Um, the course is very nice, challenging with all the bumps and bunkers. But they were all chasing Israel's Letitia Beck. The 22-year-old was in a class of her own over the first two days, carding a seven under par total. So the top 10 looked like this, with Beck leading the way. She would be the number one seed heading into the match play section of the tournament, with Tangway of Canada, Scherer of Germany, and Jimenez of Spain amongst the best qualifiers. Coming up after the break, the climax of the 2014 Ladies British Amateur Open Championship, who would hold their nerve as 64 players battle for one prize.
So it was down to the final 64. Royal St George's was proving a fine test for some of the world's best players. Match play is about holding your nerve in head-to-head -head matches. Lose it, and on a Lynx course like this, you could soon find yourself heading home early. Letitia Beck proved to be the form player over the opening stroke play rounds, but how would the Duke University student fare with the knockout format? You need a good imaginative short game around the Lynx course, and the girl born in Antwerp but choosing to represent Israel certainly had that. She made short work of Emma Brosi of France to progress to the second round with a 4-2 and two win. There she would meet Curtis Cup player Gemma Drybra, who was taken up the 18th by India's Aditi Ashok before winning one up. Oh, well played, Gemma. Lovely putt. Well played. Su Hyun Oh of Australia is no stranger to the limelight. Second in the Australian Masters in 2013, the former world number one gave Sweden's Louise Riddestrom a torrid time with a 5-4 and four win. Samantha Giles from St Melian in Cornwall was involved in an all-English affair against Holly Muse, the Lancashire champion. A long putt on the 17th from Giles would see her move into round two with a 2-1 and one victory over Muse. There she would meet Su Hyun Oh. With two rounds of matches played each day, it was a long day for players and spectators alike. One of the shock casualties of the opening round was Bronte Law. She went down to Francis Elise Genot, three and two. When it's not your day, it's just not your day. Law's expression said it all. There were some home cheers, however, for Gabriella Cowley. She would progress into the afternoon second round with a win on the 18th against Sweden's Emma Henriksson. And the number two seed, Leslie Klutz, would also progress into the afternoon with a 2-1 win over Dulce Sverdlov. In the afternoon, Gemma Dreiber produced one of the performances of the day against the number one seed, Letitia Beck. Dreiber hit one of the shots of the week from the car path on the back of the 18th hole. And she would sink that putt for a one-up win to progress into round three and eliminate the number one seed, where she would meet Emily Pedersen of Denmark. Also moving into the third round was big-hitting Alice Hewson, showing a deft touch around the greens. She beat Germany's Laura Funchstuck, four and three. Samantha Giles' dreams came to an end, losing five and three to Su Hyun Ho, who would now beat Hewson in the third round. Gabriella Cowley continued her fantastic form with a 3-2 and two victory over the 2013 beaten finalist, Luna Sobron of Spain. The only Irish player left in the field in round two was Olivia Mahaffey. The highly rated German Antonia Scherer would stop her progress. Four and three, the winning score. Quietly going about her business was the number two seed, Leslie Klutz. For the second time in the day, her match would finish on the 17th hole. This time, France's Laura Lee Mignot was on the wrong end of the result. The competition was bubbling nicely as 64 became 16. Day two of the match play would bring conditions that the players hadn't encountered all week when the wind changed direction. As the players readied themselves for the matches, only three Great Britain and Ireland players remained in the competition and maybe they were best placed to adapt to the changing weather patterns. Gemma Dreiber was out in the first match. She was looking to continue her fantastic start to 2014. The runner-up in the British Stroke Play Championship last year will be up against Emily Pedersen of Denmark. Pedersen from Copenhagen came into the event as one of the strong favourites. Already the 2013 European Women's Individual Amateur Champion, she would be pushed all the way by Dreiber as she secured the first of the quarter-final places with a two-up victory. Su Hyun Ho had set the amateur scene on fire over the last 18 months and came into the competition as the overwhelming favourite for the title. But she hadn't banked on the dogged determination of Burke Hampstead's Alice Hewson. Several times she went behind to the Australian, several times she came back to level the match. Most notably on the 17th when her second shot set up a birdie to square the encounter. The 18th was halved, but Houston at the first extra hole took the victory and put out the pre-tournament favourite. 
She would be the only representative from the home countries in the quarterfinals as Gabriella Cowley's great run came to an end. Since 2000, there have been five Spanish winners of the event, the last being Azara Munoz in 2009. Naomi Jimenez had got to the semi-finals last year. Rosie Davis from the United States delayed the inevitable with a 40-footer on the 13th, but one hole later, she was knocked out of the competition 5-4. and four. Also progressing to the quarterfinal was Belgian Leslie Klutz, the highest seed at number two left in the tournament. France's Elodie Briden took her down the 18th before running out a two-up winner. Eight quarterfinal places decided, eight different nationalities represented. The quality and depth of the field for the event was the finest seen in years. The first of the quarters made grim reading for Alice Hewson. Emily Pedersen was getting better by the round. The English girl had been up twice over the opening five holes, only to be pulled back at the very next. A blitz around the turn would see the 2013 Junior Solheim Cup player move into the semi-finals with a 4-3 win. The Spanish were out in four supporting Naomi Jimenez. She was up against American-based Swede Jenny Hagland, but the Swede quickly got into her stride as she raced to three up after just four holes. Although Jimenez did make some inroads just after the turn, it was Hagland that was set up an all-Scandinavian semi-final with Pedersen. In the third quarter-final, only three holes were halved between Anne Van Damme and Marianne Basery of France. It would be the 2013 French champion that would move into the semis, winning two and one. American University students Leslie Klutz and Germany's Antonia Scherer were having a ding-dong battle. Klutz had raced into the lead four up at the turn, but a fight back from the German, which included winning the 17th and 18th, forced the match into extra holes. At the first, Scherer's hard work was all undone as she missed a four-footer to hand the win to the Belgian. So to the semi-final draw, and it looked like this. Emily Pedersen of Denmark would take on the lowest seed left in the tournament, Jenny Hagland, and Frances Marion Vessery would take on Leslie Klutz. The final day was cold with rain expected, and again, the Lynx threw up another of its many surprises. The players would be tested to the limit after seven rounds of golf and four days. The mood on the first tee, calm, relaxed, and focused. In the first of the semi-finals, Jenny Hagland went into a two-up lead after six holes, only to see Pedersen square the match by the 10th, and by the 13th, the Swede again had a two-up lead. Pedersen, through the week, had been calmness personified. By the 15th, the match was again all square, much to the delight of Pedersen and her caddy. Then the weather turned as torrential rain made its presence felt to add more spice to the semi-finals. As the players walked up the 17th, the match was finally poised. It had been a gripping encounter for the spectators to admire. On 17, Hagland sank a long putt for birdie to lead one up, heading up the last. And what a putt that was. Horrible conditions, but not to be outdone, the Dane came back with her own piece of magic on the 18th to go into extra time. Again, the Swede had seen the Dane come back at her. What a match. The first extra hole would prove decisive, as for the first time, Emily Pedersen found herself in front as she sank this 25-footer to book her place in the final. The other semi-final was a much more one-sided affair, but it had drama in so many ways. French girl Marion Vessery chipped in at the first. It wasn't exactly straightforward. But in it went, but only for a par, and she would lose that to a birdie. The French coach must have been pulling his hair out. Vessery was playing some stunning golf, but found herself four down to Leslie Klutz after seven holes. At the eighth, the girl from Toulouse hold this massive putt again for a par. Oh, what a great putt. Smiles and high fives all round, but she was about to go five down as Leslie Coots birdied the eighth. The second semi-final avoided the incoming weather as on the 14th, Coots finally sealed the win with a six and four victory and a place in the 2014 final where she would face Denmark's Emily Pedersen. Hold one for Leslie Flute and... 
not only was the prestige of winning the title at stake, but also a place at the 2014 Rico Women's British Open, this year held at the Royal Birkdale Golf Club. The opening nine holes would be shared as both players won two holes apiece. At the 10th, Pedersen went into the lead with an eight-foot birdie putt. Two holes later, that lead was doubled as the Dane put on a putting masterclass. A touch around the greens had been first class all week. And time and time again, she found the centre of the cup. Klutzer called on the services of Letitia Beck, friends from back in Belgium, to caddy for her. On 14, she gave herself an opportunity to get back into the final with a birdie, only to be one down with four to play. But at the 15th, the lead was restored with this chip in, and it handed the initiative back to the Dane. Two up with three to go. On the par 3 16th, with Pedersen no more than two feet away for birdie, Klutz again showed her quality with a long par putt to make the Dane putt out. Match play can be a funny old game. It can play with your mind. Pedersen misses this putt to close out the match. The Dane was furious with herself. On the 17th, Klutz had herself in trouble and needed this 15-footer to keep it going. But it wasn't to be. And Emily Pedersen took the match 3-1, and one, much to the delight of family and friends. This seemingly shy and unassuming young girl becomes the first Danish player ever to hold the title. It's amazing, a lot of good players, professional players have won this tournament and it's the biggest in the world, so it's, it's really great. So it's congratulations to Emily Pedersen, the 2014 Ladies British Open Amateur Champion. That's it for this month. Congratulations also to the United States Curtis Cup team on their victory at the St. Louis Golf Club. Remember to keep up to date with all the news and action at lgu.org. And also follow us on Twitter at Ladies Golf Union. But from me, Robert Lee, it's bye for now.